Hi everyone! Welcome back to the Stitches and Scribbles channel. My name is Erin and today I've got a tutorial for you. So I created this super easy granny stitch cowl. We're calling this the Halloween weekend cowl because you can easily make it in a weekend. It can even be a one-day project if you have a significant amount of time to dedicate to it. I made this in some Halloween Hobie sock yarn, so if you, like me, bought this when it first came out and then didn't know what to do with it, this is a perfect project to use that up or any single skein of sock weight yarn that's in your yarn collection. You could also totally do this with other weight yarns. You just need to adjust the measurements as you go, but it's pretty easy and I'll explain that as we get into the tutorial. But without further ado, let's dive in to the stitching. All right, for this project, you will need a single skein of sock yarn that's around 400 yards or longer. I am using the Halloween sock wool from Hobie, which is 75% superwash wool and 25% polyamide. It has 420 meters or 459 yards. Again, this is pretty close to a standard um, skein size for sock weight yarn. Um, so even if you're using a hand dyed or an indie dyed yarn, um, it should be pretty close to this measurement. And this is color number one. This one was from a couple years ago. I'm not sure if they still carry this exact color. I'm, I think they do, but the numbers or the names may have changed because it's a couple years old. But we're going to be using this today to make our spooky cowl. And then I am also using a four millimeter hook. If you are worried about running out of yarn for this project, I recommend going up a hook size or two. It'll still kind of give the same drapey cowl effect. You'll just have a little bit looser tension in your stitches and it will be a little bit more lacy and more open work looking than if you use a smaller hook. But I'm going to be using a four millimeter hook today. You're going to start by finding the center pull of your yarn, if that is the type of skein you are using. Mine, of course, is choosing to be a little bit difficult, but here we go. This is also a self-striping yarn, but you can use a speckle, a solid color, really whatever you want. It's still going to work up in a really fun granny stitch design. Got lots of orange in that first stripe there. I'm going to start with making a slip knot. Any method of slip knot will work. Then insert your hook and chain four for your starting round. A little chain just like that. Then you're going to insert your hook into the first chain and pull through to make a little circle of those chain stitches. Now we're going to start our first row of the granny stitch that will set up the base for the triangular part of this cowl. So we're going to start by chaining four again, and this will count as one double crochet plus a chain space. Then we're going to do a set of three double crochet all in that loop of stitches that we made. So there's one double crochet and two and three. So now we have a chain space and a granny cluster. Now we're going to make our corner space, which is a chain three. And then we're going to do another granny cluster, which is three double crochets. So there's one, two, and three. And to end the row, we're going to do a chain one for our chain space on the other side and one more double crochet into the loop. So this is where you'll see the start of that triangle shape begin to appear. You can also kind of pull on your yarn end a little to tighten up that center hole if you need. Now we're going to turn our work so that we can start the next row. You're gonna start by chaining four, and again, that will count as a double crochet and one chain space. Now we're going to insert our first granny cluster into this first chain space right here by the edge. So create 
one double crochet, two double crochets, and three double crochets. Now we're going to chain one to kind of bridge the gap over the next granny cluster and do another granny cluster in the corner. That's one double crochet, two double crochets, and three double crochets. Since we're in the corner, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and do another granny cluster in that same corner space. There's one double crochet, two double crochets, and three double crochets. Do a single chain space to bridge the gap over the next one, and do a granny cluster in the edge space. And since this one is on the edge, we're going to end with a chain one and a double, another double crochet, but instead of just putting the double crochet into the edge space, we're actually going to do it into the third chain from the row before. So you yarn over, then insert your hook into that chain and do your double crochet. This just adds a little bit of extra security to that edge. The stitch isn't going to slide around as much as it would otherwise. We're going to do one more row together. So we're going to start with a chain four, then do a granny cluster in that first space, chain one to bridge the gap, do another granny cluster, chain one to go over the granny cluster, and now we're in the corner. So we're going to do two granny clusters. There's our first one, then chain three, then do another granny cluster in the same space. Then chain one, granny cluster in the next space. Chain one, granny cluster in the edge space. Ending with a chain one and a double crochet into the third chain. And there's your little granny triangle motif. We're going to continue doing this granny triangle motif until this edge. So the longest edge, instead of where you're actively working, it's kind of the one that just forms as you create your rows. Once that row or that side is long enough to fit around your neck comfortably, we'll do the next step. But you're going to continue your pattern of doing a chain four, then doing a granny cluster in every space until you get to the corner. The corner has a granny cluster, three chains, and another granny cluster then chain one cluster until you reach the edge. And in the last space, you do a granny cluster, a chain one, and a double crochet into the third chain. So you're just gonna continue that triangular stitch pattern until you've gotten to the length you want on this side. I ended up crocheting 24 rows to get to the length that I wanted for my cowl and that was enough that it fits kind of loosely around my neck. But now we're going to join our two corners, and the way that we're going to do that is after you finish a row, you're going to chain one, then insert your hook into the third chain of the opposite side, and do a slip stitch to join. Now, we're gonna turn our work You're going to chain three, and that's going to count as your first double crochet. Our chain joining the two corners is going to count as a um, space where we do a double crochet cluster. So we're going to do a double crochet, 
and another double crochet. And then with that chain three, that counts as three double crochets. And you're going to chain one, put a double crochet into the chain space from the previous row, and make that into another granny cluster. And then you're going to continue your granny cluster and chain one pattern as normal around the cowl. So you should still be working on the side that has the point increase and you'll do that increase as normal when you get there and come all the way back around to the other side and I'll show you what to do when you get to the end of the row. Alright, once you get to this point you should have a double crochet cluster in that last space and then we're also going to put one in this corner space created by the last row. That's two and three. Now to join the row, we're just going to chain one, insert your hook into the third chain of that chain one we started with, and slip stitch it through, and that ends your row. And then you're going to turn your work, and we're gonna start another round going in the opposite direction. So we're gonna start the same way as last time, with a chain three that'll count as our first double crochet and you should have a space right there. It might be a little hard to see for the first row or two just because they're a little funky but you insert right into that first one to do your two double crochets, chain one, and then continue around in that granny stitch pattern as normal. I like to switch directions every round by turning my work. You technically don't have to with a granny stitch. You can just go in a continuous circle without flipping your work, but I find that it lays much flatter when it's on if you switch directions and turn your work after every row. You're going to continue these granny stitch rows until the section right here where that kind of seam is in the back is as long as you want and still fits comfortably on your neck or when you run out of yarn. I'll check back in when I have gotten it to my desired length. And that is the finished cowl. I ended up doing 10 rows all the way around once I joined my two corners, which was just perfect for how I prefer these to fit, but as I said earlier, you can totally adjust all of the measurements to fit what you want. You can make the neck a little bit tighter, you can make it even looser so that it hangs down more in the front, you can make it longer, all sorts of things. It's just a really easy way to use up some yarn in your stash. I actually have made this three times now already. You'll recognize this one from one of my previous vlogs where I was crocheting during a garage sale and this used a set of minis. Um, this one, I changed the proportions quite a bit from this design because this part is a lot shorter, but the neck hole is a lot bigger, just because I was trying to match a previous thing that I had made with this yarn. And then I also made it in this colorway, which was a Lord of the Rings inspired yarn that I got from a yarn festival. But this is the perfect accessory for any seasonal occasion. Um, if you are going trick-or-treating with your kids, having one in Halloween colors would be super cute, or even just going to work for the day if you cannot wear costumes to work. Um, it's a great way to just use up um, one of those random skeins of yarn that you have lying around that you don't know what to do with. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do have more cowls with the same shaping method planned. Um, so if you're interested in those, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified of all my videos right here on YouTube. And if you would like to follow me on other social media sites, that information will be in the description box below. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.